about investments. We're right. even talking about like artists who have actual investments that like can sustain them while they're waiting for all this stuff to blow over. You know, you have you have cats like Rick Ross, who I always have to mention because I love Wingstop, and I have <laughs> homies that love Wingstop, and Wingstop is insane. We and love Rick Wings. Ross <laughs> made such a good move with buying as many as he did because that nigga's straight. Kanye's straight. <laughs> I know Kanye's straight. Kanye's straight for eternity. Kanye just like, dropped the ugliest Yeezys, by the way. I yeah. will not support you, Kanye. But fuck them Yeezys. They're not cute. I don't care what anybody has to say. <laughs> but you but you are a smart man flex, for having that fashion it's line. It's about the flex. Right. It's about the flex of having the Yeezys. It's the fact that I can go and spend as much money as I like as however much Kanye asks for and then I, I step out in some Yeezys <laughs> and my Yeezys may look like repurposed sketchers but, but like, I mean at the end of the day I could say that I'm wearing something Kanye made and he you. making money in his sleep regardless right exactly regardless. you have cats who are doing who but that's the thing is like I think if anything if nothing else right that what we've realized is that as far as artists go for them to be able to continue making and 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 releasing uh work they have to have other forms of income they have to and it, it's crucial I think multiple streams of income is the only way you can actually eat in 2020 these days that's like the, you have to have like a fashion line a makeup line a hair line uh you have to do this invest in stocks it's everything like these days like mm -hmm. um so it's just the fact that you see like the plummet of some of these artists that are just like i see a bunch of artists in the studio like not even in the studio right now just partying mm -hmm. like you know living it up but what are you doing behind the scenes to like right. basically be better and invest and right. not be one of those artists that's just going to fade 10 years from now we need to see growth and longevity and that's I think that's what a lot of these young younger artists are forgetting like you have to grow mm -hmm. or else you're not going to stay in this game well, this game is very hard I think it's so wild when you kind of if you look back on the artists like from the 80s and not even just in rap but like in all platforms like who made it and who didn't like what artists really is a good idea for artists to do is study your predecessors. Make sure you're right. studying what made Madonna last as long as she did and stay relevant and make right. as much money as she did. What made, um, you know, people like, what, uh, who else? Like Willie Nelson, Dolly Part, people right. like that who have been in the game for a really long time. A really long time. Like, what have they been doing to they like haven't been, They haven't been there? making music the entire time. No, they've been doing something else. Other, other stuff been, behind the scenes. Exactly. And then, like, you see artists like The Dream, who's just been writing for, like, so many artists, like Beyonce, like Bobby Valentino. Like, he's written for so many people. Mm -hmm. And, like, people always ask questions about, like, where is he now? Like, nah, he's getting his bread by writing for other people. He exactly. doesn't even want to be in the, in the scene. So, like, you have people like that who do fade, but mm -hmm. they still are doing something. And I think, you know, that's what J. Cole is really trying to get to. And, like, while we're on the topic um, of J. Cole, like, you heard it's on the bluff, though. Oh, my God. That song was kind of, like, a really talked about song. It's been all over Twitter. It's been all over everywhere. Everybody's been talking about this no name and J. Cole beef. So, what is your thoughts on it, Brandon? Where are you at with that? It's not... Beef. It can't be beef. It's too. <laughs> it's too smooth and like too much about really just trying to like educate somebody else or like open a conversation more more so than anything. And like I think they both have valid points because you've heard song thirty three. I have heard song thirty three. For you those of you that. who haven't heard song thirty three, it's no names reply to snow on the bluff. If you haven't heard snow on the bluff. You need to like. Go what ahead. are you doing? It's bro? gonna be in like, our. Do you even really listen? To, if you're not, if you haven't like listened to the new J Cole drop, like <laughs> right. I'm sorry, I'm a J Cole stan. I fucks with J Cole. We stand him. We Platinums love him. with no features, bitch. Anyway, <laughs> point is you're going hard for J Cole right now. Calm I really down. Am. But <laughs> point, down. <laughs> point point I'm trying to make is is like they both had really valid points. And right. J Cole's point was like, yo. I get that you're mad and like it's okay to be mad and especially for some of the things that you're mad at it's completely warranted like it, it you should be you should be mad but, but at the end of the day you have to be patient with other people especially your people and understand that like they're not they're not looking they may not be looking at it from the same uh thought process thought process and standpoint and i feel like no name's argument was more so so on the lines of why are you even making music about me when you could be out on the front lines helping people but what a lot of people don't know is j cole has been out there protesting for his people ever since that whole uprising happened in flint like a while back and a lot of people may not know what it is but um it's around the time another 
bl young black man got shot as well. So, you know, he's he's been doing a lot of things. And I think No Name, she had like this mis um, directed energy in a sense mm -hmm. towards J. Cole. And I, I really did like her stand on it though, her point. And mm -hmm. how, do you, how did you feel about No Name's point there? I feel like she had the best point out of the both of them. And, at, and then also her own kind of reaction to her release, which was like, I shouldn't even done that. Right. Like I, I I drew more attention away from what is actually important by engaging with this man when mm -hmm. I didn't even need to, which I don't disagree with, but I'm also of the the mode of mind where it's like, bro, stand up for yourself. Like at the like you had a valid point when you said like, yo, you could definitely be making music about this. You could be you could be releasing you know songs that are are uplifting and, and uh, helping people deal with you know right. kind of the, again the new normal exactly and just and making sure that you know we're keeping the train rolling rather than turning around and talking about me and how I react to it. Like it's grief and art are so deeply intertwined and deeply they're also, intertwined, also very sure. subjective. They're both very subjective. How you grieve is not going to be how I grieve. Exactly. What you want to release on an album is not what I want to release on an album. And I get it. Like, No Names, like, I love how she just directed it at J. Cole, too. Like, she really didn't bring up, like, a lot of, uh, she could have directed it at other many, m more people who have been, like, in the shadows. Like, for instance, ASAP Rocky came out about a while back when he was in prison stating that uh, he was not interested in black people at all and I think he had he was like just stating that he wasn't of the black community like she could have even directed the song at him you know I, like yeah. I, I like, like any there like I there's mean, just so many other people that it could have been directed at but ASAP that man is ASAP we're not even so, gonna go on ASAP cause we can talk so shit that's so aggravating I'll talk shit about dude, ASAP like that was so <laughs> aggravating I was like bro are you fucking serious yeah like you have made so much money from the black community and you have black benefited culture, period. black yeah you have benefited from black culture like and, to say and you're, you're gonna not sit there and say us. you don't care like i don't think he i, I, don't, I don't i'm not 100 percent certain that he said he didn't care i what i know is that he said like it doesn't affect me right and it's like <laughs> yes and no I mean, as a black man, it definitely affects you. It affects how people are going to look at you across the world. Exactly. Especially if you can't stick up for your own, the cause that your own people are, are fighting and dying for. I mean, at the end of the day, it's like a lot of celebrities that have this like mindset, like I'm famous now, so I technically have surpla surpassed the black community. And like, a, and you look at people like ASAP who has that mindset, you've seen like, I don't know if it's, oh, damn, I can't even think of somebody else right now. Like, <laughs> And bring it up but well you know but see the thing that i the thing that i think that part of that comes from is the the kind of like opportunities that you get from having money and then it also the fame making sure that like you being known and as a black person we're constant i or at least myself i grew up fighting for having my own identity and not just being like that's Brandon, he's black, right. of being, that's Brandon, you know right. what I mean? And so a lot of people are constantly looking for that kind of validation of like, you know, no, I, I'm not I'm not just my race, I'm something else, right. which is what black people have been fighting for from the jump, from the jump. in reality. But when, it, when you break it down, it makes sense that these people who kind of get to the point where people are looking at them and they're like, oh, that's ASAP Rocky, oh, that's um, ASAP Ferg, oh, that's, mm -hmm. that's Rick Ross, oh, that's this person, right. that, you know, they get to the point where they're like, oh, Oh, I'm not, you know, I'm not, not just that, just you know that what I mean? anymore. Like, it, it's just so weird. Um, okay. Yeah, it's, okay. it's whatever. Anyway. It's whatever. But um, so just like going, just moving forward with it, I think that they both had really valid arguments. But I think in this time, like, we really have to look at, you know, how people are going about it because it's like don't move in ignorance right now mm -hmm. this is not the time as black people that we should be moving in ignorance or being against each other this is the time that we need to be unified that we need to be able to grow together as people um and both of them i'm just, i'm not even gonna say either of them are right or wrong but it definitely could have they could have used this moment um to definitely talk more about george floyd um as brianna taylor all of the lives that have been lost oh yeah no for sure like brianna taylor like like, we 
we need to have more and we still haven't happening. came to justice for Breonna Taylor so no. um, and I think that's something they could have also touched on just because oh, absolutely her, you know her death wasn't as in the light as Floyd's and then what right. was that uh, I forgot that one brother who he was shot in his house because some lady thought it was yeah, her apartment. Yeah, it was her apartment. I And it's sad. Like, And we have so many instances like Deion Johnson out here in Phoenix, Arizona, rest his soul. Um, he was shot for just sleeping in his car. Um, and I was at that protest, by the way. So I got to see um, the brother and you just see like the grievance that they had. Like, And it's just, it's crazy because No Name and, and J. Cole, they definitely could have, there's just too much happening f- for there to even be a slight beef. Yeah, no. For real, I got yeah, I gotta agree with that 100. percent There shouldn't be any, in my head, there really shouldn't be any kind of focus on beef in the sense right. of like, you know, oh, I, you know, I'm beefing with this person for whatever reason. Right. At the end of the day, to me, that seems so inc- unconsequential. Right. Like that, that there is no reason for you to be beefing with somebody else at this current moment. Right. There's too much going on in the world. There's too much going on in your country, and there's too much going on with the people that are supporting you. Exactly. That right. you need to be present for. Right. And it's like, okay, it's you have like these, these handful of... Um, you know, white people and white culture who don't understand what we're going through as black people. So it's our jobs to be unified. It's our jobs to make sure that people understand like the oppression that we've gone through as black people. You know what I mean? So it's, and it, like we were talking about this earlier, how like we want, we see so much new things happening, like corporations celebrating yeah. Juneteenth. Like, when did you guys ever care about yeah, Juneteenth? Yeah, exactly. Now it's, now it's, oh my God, let's give her the day off. Let's give her the day off. Let's, Starbucks, Starbucks doesn't even have the day off. Mm-hmm. It's just like, like yeah. we're looking at so, so much new stuff happening and it's I, crazy. Yeah, that's the thing is like, what the the purpose for it like your purpose behind it at this point it feels like too little too late you know what i mean like it, it i i don't want to say that because everything has purpose and anything that you know somebody with a huge platform or you know a huge amount of money like a corporation is able to do is important for the cause but at the right. end of the day i mean it, it it just like i said it's too little too late you've never given a fuck about us before <laughs> right really so haven't. why is why so, is this time different so this time and well and this time is different like to me at least everybody everybody says it is like you know the violence against black and brown people isn't new it's just recorded now Mm -hmm. and so now you're able to say to a corporation hey you didn't support us in this time i'm not going to support you right and so the corporations are terrified of that they're terrified of losing people and especially with uh, uh, the the momentum of the movement Mm -hmm. you know what i mean because with that if you you don't support black lives matter you just lost a whole whole bunch of money like you just got a whole (laughs) lot of bad press right a whole lot of bad press like nobody wants to be involved with you like when the starbucks employee was not allowed to go into the corporation wearing anything black lives matter related we definitely got to see um how they handled backlash and then they changed their tune later um letting that employee wear black lives matter but you see the outcome of that it was money talks it wasn't like we actually care about black people we actually you know support you guys but we see that oh a lot of people are starting to hate us we're losing money now so this is why we should be affiliated like that's the black lives bandwagon right that's what it comes down to you have artists who are who are hopping onto that bandwagon right like that that's the kind of stuff that we're dealing with now is you know i'm gonna do this in in for me it's a moral question is you know like why are you doing it and then you Mm -hmm. have to ask yourself that question you need to be asking yourself you know you as an artist you need to understand that what your intentions are is not how everything is going to be taken taken. and so what are you how are you going to make sure that you're doing this from a place of actual caring and want for education and hope for bettering things rather than you know just trying to come in and make a check real quick right like how do you even do that like and, and it's hard because again art is subjective I could sit here and say, oh, this person released a a Black Lives Matter anthem because they wanted to make a bunch of money. But I 
I could be completely wrong. Yeah. I could and, be completely Because a lot of people of have been releasing that. a bunch of Black Lives Matter songs all of a sudden, but, I mean, where were those songs like a year ago? Exactly. <laughs> like, when did exactly. you think about making that a year ago? You were like, popping Molly and Lean, but motherfuckers were still dying, you bro. You was in the club, but what now? So, it, I don't see the, the difference. But you see that how everybody's been moving so differently ever since the riots, ever, ever since it happened. It's just like... The this, our 2020 has just been upside down. Um, so just going back to artists right now, I think every artist needs to be using their platform for a very good reason. Um, you know, even if it's just to say like, you know, Black Lives Matter, like just say that. It needs to be thoughtful. Just be, to be, be genuine you like, be in how you move. Thoughtful, thoughtfulness is thoughtfulness is the only thing that's going to save us at this point, honestly. Yeah. Is being present and being mentally aware of what your voice means in any conversation. In any conversation. You have to be re- you have to be making sure that you're making relevant points and you're coming into it educated. And if you're not, you have to be willing to be coachable and learn. Right. And that's that's honestly to me what a lot of this is about is making that presence making our presence as black people known and also offering that that the the you know lessons that we can give and and the understanding that we can give to people who are willing to listen how are your parents like feeling about it because i know you're biracial and everything so it's like do they have different sides when it comes to this or no i haven't spoken to my mother about it um my father is um, his main, his primary focus is COVID. He's just like stay the fuck inside. Like, right. it, it, like when it breaks down to it, he's like, he's like, I'm tired, and I'm like, yeah, no, I'm tired too. And we just we've talked about it a little bit, and just trying to trying to figure out that you know, he's he's been trying to to help me understand you know just kind of you know where where where, where it's all where coming, it's coming to all coming where to you know, like where it's going. Yeah. So yeah. that's that's what I've been talking about with him on that and and my mom and the little conversations that we've had about it is like you she won't she won't be able to understand and like i'll have my thought process on things that you will not be able to understand right but you know it you can at least know my reasoning behind it and you know whether you agree with it or not that's not really the relevant point the relevant point is just that you understand why i'm doing what i'm doing and why i fight for what i fight right, for and, why. And, and what i want you know right. to be known for right and so, i just had to ask because you know like you're the closest person to me that i know has biracial parents so, you know it's, it's just it's nice to to hear both sides coming from both parents um so you know just i just had to ask you that one question but yeah, just no, like I kind of you. you know um t- sw- switching gears a little bit um just what to expect this season on sense guys so thank you thank you guys for listening to us um first and foremost i know this talk today was a little bit deep um it was definitely one of the ones we had to get into we definitely we had, had to, to touch air on out, J. Cole, okay? air out we all had of to it. air out we had to you know yeah. it's been a long time it's since been a we've... long time so this we definitely want to come back and let you guys know like we are all black lives matter all day long um and we definitely just moving forward this is you know what we will be promoting you know mm-hmm. so anybody who doesn't like it oh well <laughs> yeah. we also want to take the opportunity to show off this new set, set. you feel oh. me it's so much nicer you can see it but there's stuff up here you'll see it next time yeah see. yeah we've just been we've just been trying to get everything back into gear for you guys and really just trying to focus on making the best content that we can possible and bringing the best conversations and artists and incredible performances that we can so that's that's been our primary focus i swear we ain't been sleeping right we haven't been sleeping we definitely miss you guys so much um and definitely just be expecting a lot of different um artists this season some producers this season um some writers so we're definitely we're definitely trying to get some people um you know because we definitely love all art so not just rappers or welcome on our show it's definitely all types of artists so we're just letting that be known um so you guys are gonna see a lot of different stuff this this time of the season so we can't wait for you guys to see it and i'm juno i am brandon you can catch me on the gram at vincent van gogert and juno verse and that's j-u-n-o-v-x-r-s-e and shout out to matt black productions the fam um for always doing their thing and for this new set and we really appreciate you guys so much for watching us and until next time sense out